Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, we are going to be talking to an inspiring spirit in the afterlife, Jessie Combs. Now, you may not be familiar with that name. She is actually known for being the fastest woman on earth. She's a race car driver and a sort of a personality, like a television type personality. She has a tremendous energy about her, like enthusiastic energy, enthusiasm about her. So I am so curious to talk with her. And I'm gonna share, I, I didn't know, I mean, the only female race car driver I know of is Danica. Danica Kirkpatrick, I think is her last name, but Danica, like she's the one you know, you know, she's the girl in the guys club kind of thing. And so I didn't even know who, who, who Jessie was. And I saw a post of her and that she had recently, she's, she has died, transitioned into the afterlife in a fiery crash, like a big crash after she was trying to break one of her records again. Her goal was to be the fastest woman on earth. And I guess maybe part of the reason why I'm drawn into her and wanting to connect with her is because of that enthusiasm, that drive, that passion to pursue a purpose. And so I, I thought it would be great to chat with her. So let's talk with her. Hi, nice to, yes, nice to meet you. Like we're just like greeting each other. I, ha I haven't officially actually tapped into her energy. I just saw a post about her and uh, her untimely death. And I just instantly felt drawn to her. Again, connected to her energy and her enthusiasm. You have a spirit about you. Um, just, uh, And it's not, it's not a bubbly personality. It's like, I have a, such a respect for women who are driven, literally. I mean, you are car, hello, car driving, race car driving. I mean, what's up with that? What, what drew you to that? Talk to us about that. Why, I just feel so, I am so inspired by you. I am so inspired by you. And I, I want to know more, like, tell us about that. Like, w there's so many people who are watching that want, want to know about how do we follow our goals? I mean, where do you get that kind of passion and drive that you had? Can you, can you talk about that? Why cars, okay? I, okay, I'm all over the place, you guys. I'm all over the place because this energy feels like, wow, I'm like, like, I want to, I want to know everything. <laughs> give us the advice, give us the advice, you know? I'm so inspired, so inspired by the energy that you've got. She says, oh, thank you. She says, well, if I was that good, maybe you would have noticed me before I was dead. She says, no, 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 no. Oh, no, she's a straight talker. I can feel it. All right, okay, 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 fair enough, fair enough. And she says, it's not about how you die, it's about how you live. And I lived really true to myself and that wasn't an easy task. That wasn't an easy thing to do. I, I grew up around cars. I felt like I always had a, a kind of a sense of freedom and a desire to feel, feel that. And, and it was a rush and it was adrenaline, but it was just this freedom, like this just, Freedom, energy, uh, freedom feeling. I can't, it's hard to explain that, you know. You have a sense of, I, I think some people, for some people maybe, you just are born with a sense of wanting to expand, you know, wanting to push the envelope, you know, get to the edges of what's possible. And, and uh, like, um, and she's referring to Amelia Earhart. I just channeled Amelia Earhart not that long ago. Amelia Earhart, we channeled her, you guys. She's, she is here at Above Life Channel too. But it's not just, a, it's not this uh, desire to be a trailblazer. It's, it's not, it's not that. You just, I feel like it's something that you're just born with this, need to be at the edge, you know, to push things, to, 
to see what really you can do, you know, how far you can expand, how much you can grow. And it's like how you learn about the comfort zones and the edges of your comfort zones and how when you stay within what you're, where you're comfortable at, you don't really grow, you don't stretch yourself. But it's not that, I don't want people to think that my behaviors and my choices about driving were risky. They were not risky. I was very safe and very specific about safety and safety checks and you know weather and strategy. I know, I know my skills. I know myself and I trust myself. That's probably the biggest lesson. The biggest thing that I would want people to know, Bridget, is that you really have to know yourself. You really have to know yourself. And I trusted my skills. And there are other factors. There are other variables that you cannot control. And that's when things happen like this, like the accident. So you died doing what you love though, like you died in pursuit of your dreams. And let's be clear, you broke some records doing it. So the fastest woman on earth truly is your title. And you already had that title, but you were working to try to, um, this was in the post, so I, I saw this, this data about her, that you already had, you had set a record, a land speed record, and then you had already broken your own record and now you were trying to do it again? Like, what's that about? You're just, you're not competing against anybody else. I mean, are you? Would you say you're competitive? Would you say that you're competitive? Absolutely, there needs to be, you have to have a healthy sense of, of challenge. And if not, if no one, and, and, but, it, but it's not about, that need for competition, and it is a need, I think it's a need. It's a human need, need for competition, to challenge yourself. And it's not, it's not from comparison or fear that somebody else is going to take this you know, recognition or title away. It, it's not at all about that. It's about that, what exists inside of yourself. When you when you've come to a place where you reach a goal, you attain something, what happens after is there's a, a dramatic drop in, in your mood, in your attitude, and in your perspective. Your perspective changes because what po what's possible for you gets bigger. So you achieved this, but you know if you achieved this, and then you ask, naturally ask the question of what more is possible? What else could I do? How much more? can I actually achieve? Because maybe you ask yourself, you challenge yourself with, did I not set the bar high enough? Did I not stretch high enough? Or is it simply a factor of you prepare, you plan, you practice, you, you ready yourself for that experience and you do it and you achieve it, then you set a new goal you ready yourself, you prepare yourself, and you plan and you practice to achieve that new goal. And it's it's really not a, it's sort of like the ceiling, the ceiling moves, or, or um, she's showing me like shattering the ceiling. There's no ceiling is what she's saying. She's showing no glass ceiling. There's no such thing as a ceiling, except that which you accept for yourself. She said, you only, you accept the ceiling. And if it doesn't exist for you, then it's not in your, your periphery. It's not in your reality. And so you create it. So instead of, it, it's, not, it's not as much as I wanted to reach, you know, give it all I got and do one shot and get this fa fast as I can go and then that's it, I'm done with that. It's really about having that mindset that you plan and prepare and train and get to a point where you achieve that goal, then you set a new bar, you set it higher. It's not that you didn't set it high enough, but what happens is, is the mentality is very interesting. You would find this fascinating, Bridget. The mentality after, after you've achieved this goal, there's a rush and it feels great and it feels good for about a day. And then you start to ask yourself, well, did I reach high enough? Could I have gotten faster? if I could have done this and this, and you start to evaluate every little detail, minute detail of the process and see where you could make improvement. 
not because you weren't enough, it wasn't good enough. There's not a, a competition between yourself. And there's not, there's, not a, there's not a negative part of this. There's a natural evaluation that happens. And I think there's a really distinct difference between evaluating the steps of a process and seeing where you can hone your skills or where there's room for improvement. There's a difference between that, which is very productive, and it should happen, it should always happen that way, and a place where you go into that's a darker place, that's a critical place of seeing fault or finding fault or problem. There's a difference between perceiving the experience and assessing it as flaws or problems or mistakes as opposed to seeing the experience and wanting to learn and grow from it and seeing all of these opportunity, these little gaps as opportunities, room for improvement and advancement. And when there's a room for improvement and advancement, that excites you. So the day after, yeah, there's an excitement that starts to build up and what else is possible? How, what else could we do? How could we fine tune this? And it's really about that ongoing and never ending process of improvement, of wanting to be a better version. As you would say, Bridget, you ta you've talked about this before, I know, because I hear the thoughts in your mind as we're connecting, that it's always a constant process of, of becoming a better version of yourself. And those are wonderful words, and you should share those with people. She's right. That's exactly what I say. So we're having, you guys, if you're watching here at Above Life Channel, I'm talking to Jessie Combs, known for her land speed record, the fastest woman on land. And she is so inspiring, has such this energy, this enthusiasm about her. And this, I really wanted to, to talk to her about the thought process and the perspective of setting these goals and achieving these goals. And, and really, I am so impressed about the passion and the drive and the very strong focus on a purpose and the meaning of that and how the purpose of our lives pulls us forward. You know, it's, it's got to be so, we have to be so narrow focused, really narrow. Like focus means narrowing in or zooming in or niching in on that purpose or that, that goal. That that matters so much to us that the criticism or the fear of a failure doesn't. It's, it's worse to not do this and to not have done what it takes. Practice, train, prepare like you said, like Jesse shared with us. It's, it's worse to not go for that and do it strategically and focus on that process than it is to just not try because you're afraid that you're not gonna fail or that your parents are gonna say that you're you know, not successful or, or your family's not gonna understand this goal that you have and your friends are gonna think you're weird or people aren't gonna get you or people or worse, people are gonna be mean they're gonna be mean. Anonymous people on social media are gonna tell you you're crazy. Let's get some perspective here. All right, so at Above Life Channel, you guys know that when I channel, and I'm doing a channeling video, there's a lot of different ways that the energy comes through. So as Jesse is speaking to us, the energy is coming through in kind of a shared space. Like she's talking and I'm letting her, like we're integrating, we're having like this, this conversation in the space of what would kind of be considered clear cognizance or like a knowing, but it's much more in um, kind of an intellectual capacity. It's hard to describe this a little bit, but it's different than how sometimes when I talk to you and I describe exactly what the person looks like, or I'm using clairvoyance channel, which is the sight channel. This is a little bit different. And, and I think you guys will notice the subtlety of this, but. I am so inspired. I, I am so impressed. I am really, I'm impressed. Let me, I'm just gonna say that because you're like the wish for, like you're an example of not just having a dream, but being so passionate, believing so much in yourself and your, your ambition and your goal, your desire that you just, you do it. You do it not, not once, not twice, but 
attempting three times to break your own record, to not compete against yourself because you're not enough, but to compete against yourself because you're so much more. You're so much more. And that so much more is the opposite of like lack and self-doubt and self-criticism. And it's so empowering. It's empowering as a woman to see that. And, and I do feel that we should acknowledge that the fact that you died doing what you loved is a bit of a, a comfort almost, you know? It's almost like, okay. I mean, I know you were really young. I think you were in your 30s. So that from a human perspective kind of helps or people might feel um, kind of really saddened by that or like it's a tragedy. But to me, I feel like it's so, oh my gosh, you guys, I hope that when I leave this plane and I leave my body that I have been so fulfilled and done the passionate work that I wanted to do in the world and connected with as many people as I could and shared enthusiasm, encouragement and hope with people to really be who they are, you know, be your best self, just be who you are, regardless of what other people say, that what you say matters most, what you think of yourself matters the most, hands down, that's the most important part of living life, a life well lived. The most important part is for you to care about yourself and to not let yourself be restricted or confined by past experiences or limitations or even belief systems that other people gave to you, people that you love, people that you respect. It's not about choosing their values over yours. It's about just knowing so deep in your gut who you are and having that passion, passionate advocacy for yourself and your spirit, that's what connects you to a purpose and to a mission for your life. And Jesse Combs, you, my dear, very committed to a purpose and a passionate pursuit of that purpose. And I am so in awe of you. Do you have any other advice besides, I'm gushing. And I know my viewers, some of the viewers are gonna be like, oh my gosh, so annoying. <laughs> so too bad. I love this. Give us some advice. Jesse Combs, you're like the Oprah of women achieving their goals, of women being passionate about a life purpose and following their soul's desire. That's what you are. You are a major powerhouse for the spirit of women. That's how I feel. And I cannot believe I hadn't met you prior. I'm so inspired by you. Give us some advice about pursuing our goals, about being on purpose. Like talk about that. Do we, do we talk about our purpose, our life purpose? So it's so clear to me that you were definitely a woman on purpose. Talk about purpose for those of us who are still in body and live in the human grind. I think it's important to recognize that you have a lot of leeway, a lot of freedom in what you choose. And it does start, it's like what you said, it does start with the values and the beliefs that you hold for yourself because you will meet your expectations regardless of where you set your expectations for yourself. And other people will get their cues on how to treat you and what to expect from you based upon what you expect of yourself. Okay, so talk to me then about being hard on yourself because a lot of us have high expectations of ourselves and then we feel bad that we don't think there's a gap between the high expectations we have for ourselves versus what our skill and ability level is. And what about this? What about this part about having too high of expectations for ourselves? What about that then? I don't think it's possible. I think it's an excuse. I think what you're actually referring to is self-doubt. And that's a, that's a form of limitation. That's a form of limiting beliefs. And if you really are all in, if you're all in, then you set an expectation and you operate under that, that as a truth. That is a, a fact. It's not up for negotiation. It is your baseline. It is not, I think that so many people set expectations lower because they don't want to be disappointed. Well, if you are expecting to disappoint yourself, then there's no, where's the, there's no trust. 
Well, there's no relationship within your, if you don't believe in yourself, how can you expect anyone else to, to believe in you or buy into anything, whether you're creating a business, selling a product, uh, promoting something, or even in a company, how do you expect anyone else to believe in your, your ability, your skills, your ideas? Nobody's gonna get behind you if you're not behind yourself. You have to step, step up. You have to really step in to leading your life. You have to be a leader for your life. And you are the one that determines that. You are the one. So the self-doubt or the self-loathing or the, the diminished value or worthiness, those are just feelings. Those are just feelings. Those are emotions. And if you deal with those as emotions and as information, then those are not defining factors. Those are not facts. The emotion of, I don't, I'm not feeling really good about myself right now. I'm feeling um, low about myself right now, or I'm doubting myself right now. That's not a fact. That's not, that doesn't translate into reality. That's an emotion and a feeling. And as you have said, Bridget, emotions give you messages. So that's information. And that's true, but I think that people take it too much as, well, if I'm feeling it, then that's the way it is. That's not true. Emotions are not naturally just a fact that is your reality, unless you choose to do that. People are really incredible manifestors. They really, you really can, what you think you become. And that's a part of your mindset matters a lot because you talk about things in terms of energy, but the energy of your thoughts, those are concrete pillars you're putting in the ground. Those are the cornerstones of the building that you're making that's your life. You know, this big, like she showed me, big concrete cornerstones of a big, huge skyscraper building. Your thoughts are that. That's what she's describing, you guys. Is our thoughts are that important. That's impactful. That's really impactful, Jesse. But it's true. It is true. That's the ultimate beginning, ending. That's the ultimate parameters because you define your life based upon what you really think about yourself because what you think you believe, because you think it over and over and over again, it's practiced. You referred to me, Bridget, you referred to me practicing, getting ready, preparing for my racing, for my races and it's the same with your mind. Think about it that way. Your mind is preparing yourself like an Olympic athlete stretches and trains and, and gets ready for those trials. So too do you every day with your mind and the thoughts that you, you are thinking that are consistently reinforced are creating beliefs that make your reality. That may, that's a lot of power. That's a lot of power, but that's on you. Other people cannot tell you what to think. They can try to tell you what they think of you. They can give you opinions, but opinions are not valid unless you believe them. They're not valid. They're just, what are they? They are feelings. They're not facts unless you believe them. A feeling becomes a fact when you believe it and then you make it your reality. Oh my God, that's brilliant. We're gonna have to write that one down. So the, let me repeat this. Jesse Combs said this. The feeling becomes a fact when you believe it. And then it comes into your reality. Then, it's, then it becomes your reality. So a feeling becomes a fact when you believe it. And then it's your reality. And opinions, other people's opinions about you, of you, of what you're doing, giving you input, advice, advisement, opinions, viewpoints, perspectives, whatever you call it, opinions. They're not facts. They're the way they feel about something based upon their life experience, not yours. And sometimes that works to your advantage and sometimes it derails you. This is Bridget talking. Sometimes it derails you. Right. So she says, so Jesse says, know who your experts are. Know who your trusted advisors are, the go-tos, the people you can bounce ideas off of, the ones that know you well. But remember, ultimately, you are the one that decides. 
You know yourself better than anybody else knows you and you're constantly evolving and changing and outside people, even, even your loved ones, even the people that have been your best friends forever or your advisors forever, they don't necessarily know where you're at right now because you're constantly evolving and shifting your perspective and learning and growing and, and getting more curious about other things that well, this could be possible and that could be possible. And because you're processing and evolving and growing and always changing, all the people around you don't know until you have a meaningful conversation with them, a dialogue with them that provides an exchange of, uh, gives them a context for the, ex the exchanges of opinions that you have. So no one's opinion is better than another's based upon their expertise, their advisement, their view, their perspectives. You may give them a little more weight because of the experience that they have, but when it comes to applying it to your life, and to the exact circumstances that you are dealing with, you're on that. You are the expert of that. They might be the expert of over all the context and the pieces and the, some of the details and things, but you are the one that's the expert on the circumstance that you have based upon the variable of you and all of the different parts of you that that person, that expert cannot know. So you have to take anything anyone suggests to you or brings in to your thinking process as a part of, but not the be all, end all, or whole. You are the whole. You are. Wow, Jesse, geez, I think I am seriously, I am like you guys, I am like in awe of the spirit in the afterlife. I'm like, hey, can you be one of my guides? <laughs> Cause you're freaking awesome. You're rocking awesome for women. Oh my God. I am like, oh, awesome. Jesse, what a pleasure. I'm like high five in you. Yeah, what a pleasure. Wow, this is awesome. This is such a long video, but I don't care. It's been amazing, you guys. I cannot wait to watch it back. Let's get back in and ground myself in this awesome energy. Thank you so much, Jesse. Thank you for being here. Wow, oh my gosh, you guys. <laughs> power talk about power all right this is bridget at above life channel with a very passionate purposeful channeling session today with jesse combs in the afterlife so the purpose here as always has been to inspire your spirit to fill you with hope because this is your life this is your life so live it just live it thanks for watching